The best player in the game decided Monday night, <laughs> I think I'm gonna have the best game of my career. Welcome into NBA tonight. I'm Cassidy Elberth alongside Tim Legler. And Legs, LeBron's motto is strive for greatness, and he achieved it on Monday. If you're not a fan of LeBron, uh, walk away, but keep the TV on so we can get the ratings, because uh, we're about to show you a whole lot of the king. And he sc scored early and often. Just red hot driving and big from downtown everywhere, all over the place. Being dared to shoot the ball from the perimeter, hits the jumper, and then you see here the great cut. So this is a typical early start to the game for LeBron. Very aggressive, attacking the rim. One jumper mixed in there as well, but typically everything was around the rim in that first quarter. So he scored 11 in the first frame, four of seven from the field with one three. And he continued his scoring binge in the second where you noticed something. This is where I started to see that he was feeling something special. Take a look at LeBron here. This is out of the backcourt with a live dribble. That's Steph Curry type of shot. That's not what LeBron typically likes to do early in the shot clock, but walked into that three easily. And then here, now the lane is completely wide open because LeBron James is now being treated like a jump shooter. He can get to the rim. And then the patented step back jumper as well. 24 points at the half. 8 of 13 from the field. Perfect 3 for 3 from 3. All right, we pause and give some love to Big Al Jefferson. On any other night, Al Jefferson would be a headliner. But, you know, just happened to be on LeBron's 61-point game. So this is your love, Al Jefferson. What a rotten night to go for 38-19. 38-19. And <laughs> he, he's been great for Charlotte all season, really. But we have to give him his credit because he had a monster game. But then LeBron comes out in the third quarter. And the first two possessions for Miami, look what he does. Two more threes. And now, you're right, just like that, he's up to 30. And you start to sense maybe something really special is going to happen. Step back there. And then a pull-up three here. Buckets. And then in transition. Flowing right now. Flowing. Charlotte doesn't really know what to do to defend him. And now he gets out in the open floor. Gets an opportunity here to get the put back. Charlotte standing around watching. So LeBron does mix in something there at the rim. In addition to all these long jump shots. And then that great hesitation. Able to freeze the weak side defender. Gets all the way to the rim for three-point play. Had three three-point plays in this quarter alone. LeBron scored 25 in the third quarter, saying career high in points for any quarter in his career. His 25 matched the output of the entire Bobcats team in the quarter. And when you talk about him being hot from three, this may have been the craziest three of the entire game. Yeah, he could have taken another dribble to get closer to the line. That's a good 30 plus feet out. The crowd would give James a standing O, and this is what it sounded like. Hail the King, just an extraordinary night. D Wade and the rest of the team, I mean, you can't but help to just say, yeah, man, yeah, man. And here, 49 points at that point, 17 of 24, a perfect eight of eight from three, tying a career high for most threes in a game for LeBron. All right, let's flash back on March 30th, 2005. James scored a career high 56 points versus the Raptors. Remember this game? Of course I do. <laughs> look at LeBron. I mean, he is obviously chiseled back then as well, but look how much leaner he looks. He gained a lot of upper body muscle over the course of his career. So could he top his career high? Continue to scoring in the fourth. That's 51, his 10th career 50-point game. Uh, and he didn't stop there. Kept going. Pull up, jumper. How about 53 for James? Were you at any point wondering, you know, are they going to take him out of the fourth quarter? I, I was at one point, but then I started to realize that the scoring record is within reach, and they know that it's fitting. LeBron James has that record for the Miami Heat, so then I realized they absolutely were going to let him go for it. The question was going to be, was he going to run out of gas? Because it's exhausting shooting the ball that much, mm -hmm. that many times consecutively down the floor. So there with a career-high 57 for James, and then on the fall away, Jay off the glass, 59 for LeBron. And he wasn't done, still in the game, James. Drives, misses, but is fouled. So James would go to the line with 60 points in sight. And he hits the first free throw, and there you go. We like round numbers. We were cheering for 60 in the green room. 
And he wasn't done because hit the second free throw. Icing on the cake. James finishes with a career high 61 points. Also a Heat single game franchise record. Previous Heat record was 56 by Glenn Rice against the Magic on April 15th, 1995. James, 112 points in three games while wearing that mask. Maybe he should still keep wearing that mask. I don't know. Before, before LeBron, the last player to score 60 points and make at least two-thirds of his shots from the field was Shaquille O'Neal in 2000. The difference, LeBron was 8 for 10 from three. Here's LeBron on when he was starting to feel like it was going to be a special game for him. I don't know. I, I, was, I would guess I'd say midway through the third. Um, I felt pretty good in the first half, but, you know, halftime can always kind of derail things and uh, slow things up. But um, I was able to get it going once again in the third quarter, and, um, you know, I knew it could be one of those nights. Scott said he nearly took you out after three. The repercussions of that would have been what at that point? Uh, well, after, thir after three quarters, I wouldn't have hit 50 uh, <laughs> on, on a home floor. This is my first time I've ever scored 50 on the home court. I've done it so many times on the road, but not at home and to be able to do it in front of these fans. Um, so, you know, he said he's going to give me a couple more minutes in the fourth, but, you know, he gave me more in a few minutes. <laughs> this is a surreal feeling for me right now, and uh, I don't know when I'll have an opportunity to really, like, to understand what I was able to accomplish tonight as an individual. Um, you know, like I said, the excitement from the fans, they sh they were showing me that I was doing something special. Looking over to our bench and seeing them, you know, really, you know, excited about what I was doing, they showed me that I was doing something special. When you're in a zone, you're really, you're just out playing. You're just out, you know, doing, you know, what needs to be done to help the team win, and you feel great, but you don't quite, you kind of lose sense of what is actually happening. Did Dwayne say anything after the game or during the game? Uh, well, D-Way, when I walked out of the locker room in the third quarter, he said, you better get 40. <laughs> I had 40 when he came to sit back down in the third quarter. <laughs> <laughs> so the King sets a new career high with 61 points, breaking the Heat franchise record. Other career highs for the King Monday include most points in a single quarter, most field goals in a single game, and he tied his personal best for most three-pointers in a single game with eight. And Legs, you see that his final shot chart, it tilts heavily to the left. You think that's significant in any way? Well, I think it's typical of what LeBron James has going on nights when he becomes a more prolific scorer because that's really where he likes to get to the mid-range area of the floor. LeBron James is great at the pull-up jump shot going left. You can see by that shot chart, not much in the 12 to 18 foot area of the floor on the right side. And if you looked at his season shot chart, it would look a lot like that, just not quite as proficient from the three-point line. But most of his drives now, when he doesn't get to the rim, and wants to shoot a pull-up jumper are going to be going to that left hand. And he repeatedly got there in the third quarter. Even his deep jumpers he shot in that quarter, that 25-point quarter, were going to his left off the dribble. So you can tell when LeBron James starts to get a sense that maybe I'm going to be more of a scorer tonight because my jump shot feels so good. I really saw it coming out of the locker room. Typically, guys have big first half. Halftime, you slow down, you cool off. He hit two threes in the first minute and a half, and I think that's when he realized I might be able to do something tonight that people aren't going to forget for a very long time. If this isn't a statement game, I don't know what is. LeBron topping Kevin Durant's season high of 54. Where does the MVP race stand right now in your mind? I think it's neck and neck. I think six weeks ago it was 70-30 Durant. I think three weeks ago it was probably 55-45 Durant. I think it's neck and neck now because the, the run heat LeBron James is on right now, the Heat are the hottest team in the league. They continue to win. Uh, he has played games without Dwayne Wade like Durant has without Russell Westbrook. And even though Durant's numbers haven't really fallen off, off. He's still lighting it up, not only just scoring, rebound, and assist as well. What LeBron is doing from an efficiency standpoint, the field goal percentage, the number of shots it's taking him to put up these numbers, and the fact that the Miami Heat now not only have the Indiana Pacers in their sights for the number one seed in the Eastern Conference with a realistic chance to catch them, they have the overall best record in the entire league within their sights. And I didn't think a month ago that the Heat were really going to have a shot at either one of those things. Now it's a very realistic possibility they end up with home court advantage throughout the playoffs. If they end up with that and LeBron James continues to play anywhere close to this rate, Regardless what Durant does, I think LeBron James will have the front runner for his fifth MVP. So the MVP, you think? It's a sprint run now to the finish. These two guys are neck and neck. Greatest team success, I think, will determine it. So that's an interesting race. What about the race for the top seed in the East? How do you see the Heat finishing out the season? 
given the fact that Pat Riley at the beginning of the day was cautioning fans that there's a lot left of the season to go. So the playoffs aren't just around the corner. There's, there's a lot of games to, left to be played. How do you see the Heat finishing out the They play season? two more times head-to-head. -head. Those two games are going to determine it because the Heat have the advantage in terms of schedule. More games at home. Pacers have played the majority of their games on the road. Those two head-to-head matchups coming up late March, early April are going to determine ultimately which one of these teams has home court. I think it's more important to Indiana. I think Indiana would need that game seven in their building. I think Miami would be confident that they could get that game and if not at some point earlier in the series get one and win the series in six games so I think it's more important to the Pacers but now the Heat I think are starting to get control of this because schedule favors them down the stretch and they're playing probably their best basketball of the year they've won eight straight if the Heat run the table for the rest of the season um, that would be 33 straight tying the NBA record just, you know, a little ahead of ourselves. Our just fun to play just putting numbers. that fact yeah. out there. Uh, LeBron blowing up the internet during their eighth straight win. Here's some reaction from the Twitter world. Heat owner Mickey Harrison tweeting, Congratulations to Kim James with 61 amazing points and electrifying the arena. The greatest show on earth. Let's go, Heat. Adrian Peterson, mask or no mask, that boy, a beast. I see you, King James and Sean Merriman. How about King James? Lights out. As we head to break, here's more reaction to the King's insane night. This is the hottest shooting game he's probably had in his life. Um, I saw perfection. I mean, yes, he didn't shoot 100% from the floor, but he dominated in every facet of the game. This guy is on fire. I mean, we, this is NBA Jam type dominance. We've, we've never seen like this before from LeBron. Just when we thought that the MVP race was over and Kevin Durant had all but wrapped it up, uh, LeBron James has come on strong and said, nope, it's not over. 